everyone. Sharon Cowan and I are at the ISSA convention this week, and so we decided to talk about a couple things that came up during conversations talking with other cleaning business owners. And one of the things that we just talked about with a cleaning business owner just today was the fact that she was walking down the hall and texting. And she's probably going to know who she is yeah. now. <laughs> And we teased her a little bit about that because she wasn't watching where she was going. But when she said she was replying to a client, right. that got my attention because I thought, now why is she talking to a client when she's here at a convention and she's wanting to focus and Be work focused. on her business? And so it got me thinking about what we used to do when we owned our cleaning business. And I said, well, did you tell your clients you're coming to the convention? And she said, no. Right. And I used, you know, Steve and I used to actually call up our clients. Now, I don't mm -hmm. know how you did it, but we right. contacted them and said, you know what, we're going to be going to our convention, we're going to be improving our business, and they thought, oh, that's great. And then we said, we're going to have you contact our supervisors, we would Correct. give them their names. So how I, did you And do? I think having a line of, uh, a layer of supervision in between the owner and the clients is really important to, uh, if you're not at that point just now, but getting to that point so that they don't expect that the owner is going to contact them all the time. And, and being able to leave your business and totally focus on what you're, where you are, where, whether it's a convention or a seminar or whatever it might be, that's really the most important thing that you have to do at that point. So someone else should be able to handle those um, calls and, and be the first line to your customers. Exactly, because I've seen people walk out of seminars, you know, on their phone. With the customers, and yeah. And so, you know, that was actually, for us, it was a way for, I mean, Steve used to do this with the clients, because he had great relationships with right. them, and he would call them up, or he would stop by, tell them what we're doing, mm -hmm. and we have three supervisors, and, you know, whoever was the supervisor responsible for their building, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, well, you get a hold of Ted, and Ted right. will take care of things for you. If it's an emergency, he knows how to get how in to touch get, with us. Right, exactly. So and that's, you, yeah. Uh, yeah, and as your business grows, you can't, and you have more and more clients, you can't possibly be the direct line to the clients. Right. You have to have those layers of management that are well-trained and know how to handle things and know when it's appropriate to reach you in an emergency right. in order for you to grow. Um, you can't be tied at the apron strings to the yeah. customers. Well, the other thing is that a lot of people, especially commercial cleaning business owners, like to be available 24-7 mm -hmm. to their clients because mm -hmm. emergencies come up overnight. Correct. And so how can a cleaning business owner be available but yet not have their own phone ringing and, and going through that themselves? Well, some companies use answering services or have, <clears throat> again, the supervision in line. But I really believe strongly that you have to have parameters from when you are available to handle problems personally. And those could be normal business hours. Um, your business can be available 24-7, yep. but you in particular uh, may not be. I, I have had clients who were complaining about customers calling them at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock on a Friday night saying, you know, I have to change my schedule for Monday. It's like, really? <laughs> you know, it's, it's really not, um, you need to be able to turn it off and do something else um, for some downtime. And it's, like it's really about learning to set boundaries for yes. yourself and your business. And I, I learned that a, a few years ago with another business that I had, is that these are my boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I didn't cross them, and my clients understood that. So. Right, right. So, <laughs> yeah. for those of you who are at the convention or you're elsewhere with your business and you're making yourself available but feeling burned out because of it, right. learn how to set boundaries and learn how to train your clients on who to contact when they need your company. Right. It will be okay. Yep. <laughs> you know, it will be.